Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Bootlegger shows definitely start with fast opinions. I'm useful lady, welcome. And uh, I'm continuing my series, my roundup, talking about banker scum and corporate scum. And uh, this video's target is going to be Citigroup. And uh, I already mentioned some startling facts about Citigroup uh, in a previous video. And, uh, and I've done videos on uh, Citigroup before. They're one of the kings of pay and walk away. And I'll, I'll get to more of that later. But one thing I mentioned in the previous video is this story that came out recently about uh, their uh, invisible subsidiaries. And as I uh, talked about that entire topic before, creating these uh, overseas tax havens, tax shelters, and these, uh, these puppet companies and these proxy companies and these uh, subsidiaries, uh, in Citigroup's case, uh, they had, in 2008, they had 2,000... 245 subsidiaries, and uh, this is at the time of the, the crash of Citigroup, and, uh, and, and operating in 160 countries. But since then, their subsidiaries have been reduced by 91.8 percent. And uh, but uh, as I mentioned uh, before, their holding assets are four uh, four billion more than they were in 2009. So they're roughly the same. In 2009, uh, their holding assets were $1.85 trillion. And in 2014, their uh, holding assets are $1.89 trillion. So um, they're essentially the same size company with the same amount of assets, and yet 91.8% uh, of their subsidiaries are now invisible. And uh, of course, that serves tax purposes. So they went from uh, 2,245 subsidiaries in 2008 to 187 in 2009 to 184 in 2013. And even the uh, infamous lava flow dark pool, uh, which I've mentioned in previous videos, and this is where Citigroup uh, buys and sells uh, back its own stock, uh, manipulates its own stock prices, manipulates its market, all not overseen, uh, no oversight, and uh, no regulation these dark pools and, and, and lava flow, one of their dark pools, I think they have four, uh, disappeared in 2009. So, uh, so that's one story about Citigroup. And that, there's a good example of how uh, Citigroup hates America because, of course, they're shifting all their profits overseas in, in, in these tax shelters and saving themselves from contributing uh, billions into the uh, tax pool for the government here in the United States. And uh, since Citigroup isn't uh, paying into that, that means the U.S. taxpayer, you and me, are paying into that to make up for the taxes that Citigroup doesn't pay. And that seems ironic, because you'd think uh, Citigroup would want us taxpayers to be really, really rich and have lots of money so that we'll have uh, free cash available for the next time that Citigroup needs their sorry ass bailed out. And uh, so there's that. But then there's another story that uh, came out a couple days ago, August 26, and uh, Citigroup was charged with cheating its customers on fair prices on preferred trades. And uh, they were not only caught doing that, they were caught doing that 22,000 times. And uh, all they got was a $1.85 million fine, and they had to pay $638,000 in restitution. And of course, as usual, n neither den deny or admit to it. So uh, that way they can use the, this as a tax write-off as well, uh, even that meager fine that they paid. But uh, it turns out uh, FINRA uh, has levied fines on Citigroup 408 times for trading violations, market manipulations, failure to supervise their traders. 408 times. And yet we have a bank well, or, or a company like so many others, um, that is uh, paying and walking away, um, is completely involved in uh, criminal act after criminal act, uh, can uh, get these deferred prosecutions and neither deny or admit it, and uh, nobody goes to jail. Nobody goes to jail. And uh, it's not like they, they don't have a heads up for Citigroup. Um, let me remind you, first of all, that one reason why I, as an American citizen, have a right to complain about uh, Citigroup is because let's remember that in October 
2008, Citigroup got $25 billion in TARP bailout money. And then uh, several months later, or I think it was even the next month, to November 2008, they got another $20 billion in bailout TARP money. And then the uh, United States government also gave them $306 billion in asset guarantees. And uh, they got uh, secretly, we found out later, they got two trillion dollars in below market loans and um, thanks to the Fed and then of course the Fed has been uh, pouring money into Citigroup ever since and uh, and so American taxpayers on the hook and, and regardless of the fact that uh, they, they whittled down uh, what they owed uh, the public at least on paper the fact is that uh, they owe the country and I, and I realize the whole bailout thing was all uh, a game and smoke and mirrors, but that said, uh, it's still in the uh, public record as a, a massive bailout with taxpayer money of uh, companies like Citigroup. And uh, so for them to uh, continually uh, come up with these uh, uh, transgressions against citizens who are using their services for investment or anything else. And uh, to put it in context, let's kind of go over a quick list. And uh, the story is attached below uh, for those who want to read it. But here's just a, a highlight of the litany of the last several years of uh, Citigroup and how they've shown that they hate America because they'll take American taxpayer money to bail their sorry ass out. But uh, they continually find new ways to screw as many people in America, American citizens and foreign citizens for that matter, um, uh, uh, out of money left and right. So in 2002 they were fined $215 million for deceptive and abusive abusive lending practices. 2003 they were fined $400 million for fraudulent stock research. In 2004 they were fined $70 million for fraudulent handling of subprime loans. 2005 they were fined $208 million in improper mutual fund transactions. 2005, they were fined $25 million for manipulating the euro bond market. 2008, they were fined $1.66 billion for aiding and abetting the Enron debacle, another criminal activity. 2008, they were fined for illegal account sweeping. Um, 2008, they were fined uh, $30 billion. Well, they had actually did $30 billion in buybacks for fraudulent securities uh, sold, uh, mostly to Fannie and Freddie. 2009, they were fined $2.65 billion uh, for a settlement with the WorldCom investors, another criminal uh, act, uh, action. Um, 2010, they were fined $75 million for misleading investors about their mortgage exposure. 2011, they were fined $285 million for misleading investors. For two, in 2012, they were fined $2.2 billion for the foreclosure fraud settlement. 2012, they were fined $590 million for a class action lawsuit about misleading investors. Hey, wait a minute. Have, didn't they get fined for that before? 2013, uh, nine, uh, uh, billed $968 million for selling toxic loans to Fannie Mae. Hey, that sounds familiar too. 2013, $395 million for selling toxic loans to Freddie Mac. 2013, fine $295 million for the derivative scam. And then if that wasn't enough, of course, we have the slam bam finish this year, 2014, with the U.S. Justice Department strutting about with their $7 billion settlement with Citigroup for selling toxic mortgages to investors, which is kind of interesting when you look at the fact that uh, half of these fines uh, have to do with uh, uh, mortgage uh, abuse and uh, toxic assets and misleading investors, it's all intertwined. And those go back well before the, uh, the, the uh, financial collapse itself in 2008, uh, going all the way back to 2002. So it seems like they had six years notice the Citigroup was involved in all this criminal activity, all this fraudulent activity, all this fraudulent uh, securities, fraudulent uh, mortgages, and uh, the whole debacle. And uh, yet, uh, we still have them end up uh, poning up here in t uh, 2014 for uh, more of it. And uh, the U.S. Justice Department, all the rest, acting like it came as a surprise uh, when all this unfolded. So, uh, 
So there's some uh, pretty actual proof, as far as I'm concerned, that Citigroup hates America. And uh, I think for a long time America hated Citigroup, but uh, that seems to be wearing off. But uh, I'm trying to fan, fan the uh, embers uh, into a fire again because the, the banker scum are still out there. You're not reading about them, but they're still out there. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.